Here to react to my open and to the first day of arguments on this impeachment trial from President Trump's defense team, Senator James Langford and Senator Mike Braun join me now. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. I know it's been a long week and, uh, in, and a long day for you, although I guess shorter compared to some of the other ones. You've heard the House managers and now you heard the president's defense team. I'll start with you, Senator Langford. How do you compare the two based on what you heard today? So the, uh, what we really got was the rest of the story. I'm kind of an old school fan of Paul Harvey, uh, and he used to always talk about the rest of the story, what I come back to from Proverbs 18:17, And that famous proverb says, uh, in a lawsuit, the first to make his case seems right until they're cross-examined. Today was the first day of actual cross-examination, where before we got stories and fiction, what I call a historical fiction uh, from the last three days from the House managers, say little bits of facts with a whole lot of fiction and speculation. And today was just piece after piece after piece of the rest of the story over and over again, uh, trying to be able to get the actual information out. So very fact-based, very concise. Senator Braun, do you agree with him that, that what the senator is saying is basically there was a lot of cherry-picking going on? Do you feel that today there was a, a difference in the handling? No doubt about it. And the thing that was most amazing to me is I watched all three versions of the House inquiry, you know, from the behind closed doors, oh, yes. leaking it out, the public version, the four constitutional experts. And uh, some senators, I don't know, watched that. I did. There was not one new piece of information. It was repackaging, reframing it, and then just bludgeoning us with all that information that was only repetitive. So I think in not only how much they put out there, but in the style in which they delivered it, and I don't know what James saw, but when Adam Schiff did his kind of closing arguments and kind of grew melodramatic, uh, evoking Lincoln, and then couldn't resist coming out with, uh, hey, uh, what do you think about the fact that if you go against the president, your head might end up on a pike? And that how did you how did you take that? To me, I couldn't believe he said it, and there was a collective groan among everyone on our side, and I looked over at the other side of the aisle, and they didn't groan, but they uh, were shocked by that as well. You know, Senator Langford, the, the, the people that, that the press is focused on when Schiff goes in and says, you know, the Republicans are threatening that if you don't vote against impeachment, your, your head will be on a pike, attributable to no one, by the way, right. but Schiff repeats it, of course, uh, that Susan Collins, that some say is a Republican on the fence, Lisa Murkowski, a Republican on the fence, they both groaned, and Susan Collins actually yelled, not true in the Senate, which is so unlike people in the Senate, and Lisa Murkowski said, you know, that was over the top or whatever it was, and she said, that's when you lost me. What did you think of that? Did Schiff come in with a clean slate, or is he known as a Pinocchio in there? No, it was, it was just insulting. He didn't come in with a clean slate. We know who he is. In fact, the uh, White House counsel today brought up a 2017 interview where he said, we've got all the information. This is not just uh, information that's circumstantial. We know what the president did. And they said, well, that was on Russia. You know, so he's been saying these kind of conspiracy things theories all along that we've got this secret information on the president. We know his motives. We've got what we need. Uh, and he's been just shown over and over and over again. It's not factually true. Uh, he, he is not saying what's actually factual. He's trying to be able to spin something. And uh, that was shown very clearly today, whether it was uh, the White House meeting that even in the phone call itself said that President Zelensky said, why don't we just meet in Poland instead? Uh, the House managers have conveniently left that part out. Uh, but it was over and over again on each issue, even in their own evidence, the truth is actually there. They were just skipping over it. What do you think when he, when, when Schiff criticized President Zelensky and said, you know, even though he said there was no pressure, he really meant that there was pressure um, and that, you know, how do you think Zelensky and the Ukrainians are, are looking at, at this impeachment and Schiff in particular? They have to be as astounded as well. And they know as well as anyone, it was President Trump that actually delivered them lethal aid. Uh, look at what did not happen, you know, during the Obama administration. At one point, I had some people call me from Indiana. And the general population, especially in the heartland, is not 
kind of measuring pros and cons or getting into the details of it. And what I've been hearing is, why don't you stress that this started with his inauguration on trying to impeach him, mm -hmm. that it came over in a purely partisan way, actually it was bipartisan against it, mm -hmm. and then that you're trying to unravel an election and prevent another one in nine months. Mm -hmm. uh, people from Indiana, where I think Trump carried the state by 19 points back in 16, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're not buying this and they want to get at the roots of why this started in the first place. And Schiff and his buddies have been behind it since the president got elected. And, you know, Senator Lankford, I mean, there's no question it started when the president came down. At that point, Donald Trump came down on that escalator. And they have tried everything. And as, as, as Schiff himself, who is the, you know, the messenger of this impeachment, he's lied so much. And now the FISA court has come down and, and, and said even the, the, the spying on Carter Page wasn't predicated on probable cause. Uh, do you think that you guys are going to end up voting for, you know, more witnesses, given that it looks like the president's team will be done by Tuesday. Yeah, it'll be done by Tuesday. We'll do 16 hours of questions where any senator can ask any question. Uh, we'll do that for two days at that point in all likelihood, and then there'll be a decision by witnesses. I, I can't predict where everybody's going to go on that one. I would tell you, as I look at it, I think my questions are already being answered, uh, and there's a whole group of folks that are out there pushing, including Adam Schiff and all the House Democrat team, saying it's not a fair trial if you don't do it like we didn't do it. Uh, yeah. And it's just this really bizarre thing of they didn't have extra witnesses, they didn't allow the White House to be involved. Uh, there's 78 days total total involved in the impeachment time in the House. The president was only allowed to be able to be there seven of those days. Mm -hmm. uh, so they blocked the president out over and over and over again. But now they're saying, don't do it like us. To do it fair, you have to do it not like us. Right. Uh, and that's really odd. What they're trying to do is just stretch the trial out and make it go as long as they can through the election cycle. This is a campaign issue for them to be able to stretch it out. I think people should be able to see through that. We've got like 10 so, seconds. Weak uh, kind of circumstantial case. When it talks about witnesses, it's a faux argument because they know that would be reciprocal. And when we get our witnesses, that's a big deal. The whole thing may go away. All right. Senator Langford, Senator Braun, thank you so much for being on Justice. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Really.